All right, everybody, we're going to start this seminar. It is called Introduction to the Open Systems Interconnect Model, or OSI model. The actual formal standard is called the Open Systems Interconnect Reference Model. The key is what we are going to be describing to you in the next four sections is a theoretical dividing of communication systems and how they talk to each other, or how two computers talk to each other, and how we divide the programs. That This picture has a client in the upper left hand side, a server in the upper right hand side, and these two devices are going to communicate across the network that you see in this picture. Later on we'll show you the logical structure, but this is the physical structure. On the next slide you'll see what's inside the clouds at the bottom. But right now just notice that the client is attached to a hub. The hub is attached to cabling that goes down to a router. Routers are connected via a wide area network to the building on the right. The building on the right has the server in it and it's connected to the routers again via cabling and a hub. This slide is what's inside of the clouds on the previous slide. You'll notice on the left hand side we have HDLC over a T1. This T1 is 1.544 megabits. In the center part we have frame relay over a T1 on the local loop and then we have it connected via ATM and Sonnet. This link is 256K. Notice in the bottom of the buildings we have what are called demarcation points or DMARCs for short. These are the physical place where the customer premise ends and the carrier begins. So everything on this slide are carrier facilities and everything in that previous slide were owned by the customer or customer premise equipment. In this slide we show the first visual of the seven layers of the Open Systems Interconnect model. Notice that the seven layers start at the bottom as the physical layer and the top is the application layer. The key to this is is that layers one through six are support programs for an application inside of the client trying to communicate with an application inside the server. In this server you see the seven layers again. Notice layers one through seven but remember layers one through six are support layers of communication software that support layer 7 applications whatever they are. Normally communication applications are things like email, um, any type of distributed database, so on and so forth. This slide shows you the seven layers but notice one thing that's not showing here is the physical architecture that you saw in the previous slides. This is the logical architecture. One other thing that's shown here is a term called layered a layered architecture is the seven layers that build a communication structure. Notice that there is a topological or topology architecture here also. The key to this is the topology or all of the equipment or facilities that support the communication between the client and the server and normally that support is more done in software so we very often call it a logical architecture. The key to this architecture is the application layer in the client communicates with the application layer in the server. The presentation layer in the client communicates with the presentation layer in the server. The session layer in the client communicates with the session layer in the server, so on and so forth. And the transport layer in the client communicates with the transport layer in the server. Notice one thing, that the top four layers of protocols are end-to-end. -end. They communicate between the client directly to the server. The communication has to happen via the support of the topological architecture, but the information that's handed off to the lower layers by the application layer is all carried from the client to the server inside of what are known as packages. But the key is the information that the client sends to the server is only looked at when the information gets to the server. Now layer 3 
which is the network layer, is the key layer to getting data from the client to the server. This layer determines the path of, that the data takes when it goes from the client to the server. So the key is that this network layer protocol, whatever it is, is communicating not only with the server, but it's communicating with routers A, B, and C, or routers A, F, E, and D. Last but not least are the data link and physical layers. These layers do not communicate with the server. They only communicate with the edge device on a network. Normally the edge device on a network is known as a router. So layers 1 and 2 inside the client communicate with router A. Layers 1 and 2 inside the server are communicating with either router C or router D. The key is data link and physical layer communication only happens between two devices. In the wide area network you see here in the middle you have frame relay at the data link layer and a T1 at the physical layer or HDLC at the data link layer over a T1 at the physical layer. This slide shows you the physical path from the client to the server. The actual movement of data through all seven layers of the OSI model inside the client across the cabling notice on the cabling it becomes ones and zeros and the cabling connects to the hub and then the hub to router A then it goes through router A to router B across the hub again from router B to router C across the wide area network and then from router C across the hub to the server but look inside the server and you'll notice that we've added something to this and we've added what is known as the TCP IP layered architecture if you look at the client, you'll notice that the top three layers of the OSI model map or are the same as the, the top layer of the TCP IP model, which is inside the server, normally a protocol called HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Notice at layer four, it maps to the number two layer inside the TCP IP model, which is Transport Control Protocol, or TCP. Notice at the data link layer, we have Ethernet, and we have Ethernet in the client and the server. And remember, the one layer that gets the data or routes the data from the client to the server is the network layer. And in the world of TCP IP, that is Internet Protocol, or IP.